The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it has been written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle dove or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's Father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many may be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after their marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began praising God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, greetings and Merry Christmas on behalf of Bishop Kevin Strickland and the Southeastern Synod staff on this, the first Sunday of Christmas. I'm Pastor Justin Eller, Assistant to the Bishop for Latinx Ministry Initiatives and Associate Pastor at Amazing Grace Lutheran Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. It's good to be with you today. In 2007, My wife Carrie and I were blessed to be able to walk the ancient pilgrimage through Spain, known as El Camino de Santiago de Compostela. When you go on the pilgrimage, the route takes you through small towns and big cities, rural farms, vineyards, alongside busy highways, and through quiet, mystical forests. As you travel, you know you're on the right way, El Camino, when you see a yellow arrow pointing you in the direction you should go. Well, when I'd see one of those yellow arrows, my spirit would relax and feel assured that we were on the right path and not meandering down some random alley. But then there would be times when I wouldn't see a yellow arrow for a while and I'd grow anxious that we might be lost until I would finally share my angst aloud with Carrie. Oh, I haven't seen an arrow for a while or a sign. Do you think we're still on the right path? You know, come to think of it now, I sounded a lot like Piglet on a walk with Winnie the Pooh. Well, Carrie, in her steadfast reassurance, would always remind me, Justin, get a grip. There is only one road here. There's only one way to go. Yes, you haven't seen one for a while, but just keep moving forward until we see another one, and then you'll be fine. And if not, then we will be lost, but we will be lost together, and we'll ask someone for help. Oh, she was right. And sure enough, not long after confessing my feelings of being wound tight, 
a yellow arrow would appear up ahead, spray painted on a tree or on the side of a building, or a more formal sign would indicate El Camino. Or sticks on a, the dirt path would be fashioned into an arrow, revealing to me and Carrie and, and all pilgrims on the journey to just keep moving forward. And even in the times that we were lost, because there were times when we were lost, there were helpers in the forms of nuns, bakers, taxi drivers, and grandpas resting on park benches. After pilgriming for a while, every time I saw a yellow arrow or a stranger helped us, I found myself singing the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow, Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So now let me ask you, have you seen a sign telling you to keep moving forward? How is your spirit when you don't see one for a while? And when God reveals a promise to you or shows you a sign, how do you respond? What does your praise of God's goodness, that God's got you, sound like? How do you praise God when God reveals something to you? Well, today I wonder what Simeon's tune was as he sang to that infant Jesus gently receiving him from Mary. I imagine his nunc dimittis was sung like a lullaby, soft, full of hope, praise, joy, and love at seeing the face of his Redeemer and holding his salvation close. And of the prophet Anna, she was evangelizing with excitement to all who passed by and were waiting for Jerusalem to be set free. I bet her good news announcing was contagious and giddy, like an 84-year-old busker offering music on a street, drawing a crowd and, and sharing something to lift their weary spirits. Maybe it was something like, hey, hey, everybody, there's a baby here, and he's God's long-awaited promise, born on earth, here in our midst, he's God's love for you in flesh and bone, and he will set you free and heal you and speak good news to all who suffer and struggle. He is the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ right here, right now. Come, come and behold him. Born the king of angels, oh, come, let us adore him. In recalling civil and human rights activist Ella Baker, it seems that she who believed in freedom could not rest until it came. Nicaraguan priest Ernesto Cardenal in his commentary on the Annunciation in his gospel in Solentename wrote, People who stood up against the dictatorship were often called subversive. People who challenged the oppressive status quo. And Cardinal asked if Mary and the Holy Spirit were subversive in the Annunciation. Well, I believe Simeon's words to Mary do affirm the subversive nature of liberating good news to the poor and oppressed. Simeon said, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that he will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. Yes, this infant savior, this sign of the way, this salvation he was cradling in his arms, this swaddled promise that God had kept, will grow and embody his mother's words. He has shown strength with his arm. 
He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the satisfied away empty. Simeon and Anna affirmed Mary's yes to being the bearer of God. And they rejoice over the inclusive, radical, subversive love of God for all people. Both Simeon and Anna root the story of Jesus in the story of what God has already done. And they point to the future. They both connect Isaiah's prophecy. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. For they had gone to tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. They were living yellow arrows, resilient signs of hope and resistance, pointing the lost or those who worried about becoming lost to the way of God, pointing us in the direction of life, love, freedom, and salvation. And today, they call us to join them in being yellow arrows of God for others. So on this, the first Sunday of Christmas, may God's freedom for you that comes in the Christ child cause you to sing out with praise. May courage move you to get up and journey forward, not knowing the destination but knowing that God's hand is leading you and God's love is supporting you. And may God bless you with a spirit that is relentless in praise like Simeon and restless in prayer and proclamation like Anna, who believed freedom and redemption would come. For indeed, Jesus Christ is born for all of us. Thanks be to God.